stocks, bonds, ETFs, straight out of downtown Chicago. This is Zach's Market Edge. Welcome to Zach's Market Edge, the podcast about investing in your life. I'm your host, Tracy Reinick, and this week I'm going solo to take a look at some top stocks that have the Zach's number one rank, that's the strong buys, that are also breaking out. These are the stocks that are at 52-week highs, they're red hot, and they also have rising earnings estimates. I've been wondering about this category for a couple of weeks as earnings season has been winding down and we've seen stocks uh, you know, sell off in the Black Monday situation at the start of August, but then rebounded off of those lows. And we've had some hot names out there. And I think we all know kind of what areas those have been in, the AI, the data centers, and the weight loss drug stocks. But outside of those, what else is hot right now? And to be honest, when I decided to run the screen to find these stocks, I thought I would find AI stocks and at least one or two of the hot drug names on this list. But surprise, they they weren't on there. Um, But what was, so this is an interesting one when I did this screen. So I screened for Zach's number one ranks, which are obviously the strong buys. That's our top rank. And those stocks should have analysts revising their estimates higher. Um, And numerous of them usually in agreement revising higher. So that's how we get the strong buy. So that would usually indicate to me, since we just got done with earnings season, that these stocks did something good on their earnings report. They said something, they raised guidance, they beat and they raised, something good was happening. And so the analysts are bullish still. Then, because maybe they said something good on that earnings call, then the stocks have been rallying and are at 52-week highs. Now, originally when I did the screen, I screened for stocks that were 95% of their 52-week highs, so within 5% of that 52-week high, thinking, eh, I might not get that many stocks if I go with just stocks at their 52-week high because they have to have the number one rank too. And the number one rank is somewhat rare. So out of over 4,000 stocks that Zach's ranks on a daily basis, only a little over 200 get that strong buy rank. And right now, this week when I ran the screen, Here at the start of September 2024, it was actually 235 companies were strong buy stocks. So I already knew all I could get was 235. And then I thought, "Eh, if I go with just at 52 week highs, I might not get many at all. So I did the 95% within 5% of that high and I got over 90 stocks. (laughs) stocks. <laughs> so I said, well, that's a little too many even for me. And I went with the hundred and uh, I still got 56 stocks. That is much more than I thought I would get. So these are Zach's number one ranks at their new 52 week, but that doesn't necessarily indicate all time highs, just 52 week, But still 52 week, given what has happened over the last year, is still sending a strong signal that something good is going on at that company and the street is noticing, investors are getting in, and I want to know what's going on. So I picked out five names, as I always do, out of this list of 56. Now, as I mentioned, there were not any of or not many of the big names we would think might be on this list. And that would mean the AI stocks and those, you know, drug stocks that we know are red hot right now. So I was surprised those weren't on, but I did pick out several uh, names that most people know, but I also took a closer look at a few stocks that I had never heard of. And so I was curious what's going on with with these stocks I've never heard of. 
and they were small caps. So also interesting because a lot of analysts believe the small caps could be due for their time in the sun. And these small caps are already at 52 week highs. So without further ado, let's dive right in. Now, if you are uh, listening, I am going to share my screen here on the video podcast so you can get it on YouTube. Go over to zax.com slash YouTube to see the video podcast, or you can actually find this on our article on zax.com. I always put an article out with these podcasts and the YouTube a uh, video will be loaded into that article, so you can also watch it that way. But for those of you just listening, I will do my best to describe everything you're seeing on the screen as we go along. So either way is good. You can get our podcasts on Apple, Spotify, Amazon Music, and SoundCloud, and various other podcast platforms. Okay, so the first one out of the gate I wanted to show you is one of the big name uh, stocks, it hasn't gotten as much play in recent months, even though it should be, and it's Intuitive Surgical, ticker ISRG. And uh, you may know this one because they are the maker of the Da Vinci uh, surgical system. That's the robotic surgeries, and they've been around many years making this, rolling it out, hospitals and other uh, medical facilities buy it. And um, the stock got hit during the pandemic because fewer people were getting surgical procedures during that time. Now the hospitals are basically operating at normal procedures again. People are willing to go to the hospitals for these other procedures. And so things are kind of back to normal for intuitive and the stock is really booming as a result. So it does have the Zach's number one rank, as you can see here, but this was surprised me to see these style scores. It is very expensive stock here as it's breaking out. So I'm not surprised that it gets an F for value. I've been following uh, Intuitive Surgical for many years, but as the value strategist at Zach's, I just haven't been able to get into it. Although it did have a big sell-off um, a couple of years ago, but it never got cheap enough for me on like various valuation uh, methods. But if you were a growth investor, that was a big time to buy. Um, it still has this D for growth though, and the D for momentum, even though it's breaking out. So don't ask me why it's a D for momentum with the breakout. And it's got this F for VGM scores. But we're going to go over the short-term number one strong buy. Remember, the Zach's rank is a short-term recommendation of just um, one to three months because those analysts are always changing their estimates, right? So the rank will change. Um, okay, so I'm looking at the detailed estimates now to see why did it get the Zach's number one rank. And just scrolling down, uh, earnings expected to be up 16.8% this year, another 14% next year. This is what Intuitive has done for forever. We see 11 estimates higher in the last 60 days. So that was after its last earnings report for both this year and next year. And then you can see the jump up here over the 60 days from 626 to 667. And then next year, they are bullish again, not quite as much, but um, still jumping up there as well. And what does it look like on the chart? Um, uh, always it's been pretty solid other than during the pandemic. So you can see we had some difficulties here in 2022. It came down on the earnings, but it's now resumed kind of its normal growth trajectory and the shares surging here with um, big gains up and year to date up 44.4% on these shares. This is even a five-year breakout here but it's trading at 73 times forward earnings. So you are paying a lot for these earnings. Um, it is a huge market cap now of 173 billion. And they ended second quarter 2024 with 7.7 .7 billion in cash. That's a nice little cash hoard there. I couldn't find if they actually were doing a share buyback. They didn't mention anything in their second quarter report, which is usually where you would find it. 
So I'm not sure what their plans are for all that cash. They do not pay a dividend. So dividend seekers, this is not your stock. But it's interesting to see after that turn down there in 2022 that the shares have come roaring out of that for the most part with a few pullbacks here and there and now at these new highs. Can it can it sustain at this at 73 times forward? Um, I'm going to keep an eye on this one, but this is an interesting one to start us off on the podcast. So that's Intuitive Surgical, ticker ISRG. The next one is one you may not think about, but with gold hitting new all-time highs, I have been looking at the gold miners myself. So this one is Newmont. It's ticker N-E-M. So N is in Nancy, E is in Edward, M is in Mary. And obviously it's got the Zach's number one rank, but a lot of the style scores are similar to intuitive. It's got a D for value, a C for growth, an F for momentum, a VGM score of C overall. But you can see in the industry rank, it's ranking top 33% of the industry rank, 84th out of 251 industries. And that's because gold, uh, like we've seen with energy, when the gold price rises, these miners make more money. So their earnings are rising and the analysts expect the gold miners in general as a group, but certainly Newmont, to see rising earnings estimates in the second half or rising earnings. That's why they're raising their estimates um, as this higher price of gold really starts to um, you know, come into play with these miners. Now, much like the energy producers, what you have to be able to do is get it out of the ground. So Newmont is mainly a gold producer, but it also has copper and some of the other secondary metals. But gold is its biggest uh, item that it's producing. Also, there's been a lot of consolidation in the mining industry. So Newmont itself bought Rand Gold. Other big miners have been consolidating. So there's fewer choices now. So for instance, I used to invest in the gold miners uh, like well over a decade ago. And back then there were pretty many choices. But recently when I've gone to look, I'm like, where are all my favorites? <laughs> they no longer exist because they've been bought out. But we've seen that also in the energy industry. So this is common. And now the commodity is soaring in price. And so these types of companies can do well as long as they're getting it out of the ground and they're keeping their costs down. Now, Newmont, um, in all of their uh, investor presentations, has said that they have a $1,200 an ounce all in sustaining cost. And right now, the price of gold is at around $2,500 or $2,550. So you can see the difference between $1,200 $2,500 is a lot of extra space in there, which means cash flows are going to be good on the miners, again, as long as they're able to get it out of the ground and sell it. So Newmont has a dollar per share base dividend already in place. They're also doing a billion dollar share buyback. If the price of gold continues to rise and they have even more cash flow just sitting there, I'm sure they're doing variable dividends on top of the base, um, just like the energy producers have been doing. So that's why I like the gold miners right here, because gold has uh, some momentum here in the summer and now heading into the fall of 2024. So I like where we stand with these gold miners. They are also mainly being ignored. Now, I recently added Newmont to the value investor portfolio here at Saks, but most people aren't paying any attention to any of the miners or even the price of gold for that matter. And I like that as a value investor. So this one out opposite of intuitive surgical, it's busting out and it's still fairly cheap, even though it has that D for value. So let's take a look at the detailed earnings estimates on this one and um, what I'm talking about. So its PE is a little bit higher at 18.9 times, 
but I'm expecting that to come down as those earnings rise. But you can see because the earnings are rising, it has a peg ratio of just 0.4 or 0.39 as it's showing on Zax.com. But 0.4 for the peg, any peg under one means it has both growth and value. So scrolling down to look at these detailed estimates and to see why does they have the Zax number one rank? Well, um, we have had five earnings estimates revised higher in the last 60 days. And these are after the last earnings report and the analysts being bullish about the second half of this year and even one in the last 30 days. So we have the estimates in agreement. Nobody's cutting. And we're looking for 282 now for this year. And that is up in the last 60 days from 248. And then next year, we're looking for 340 in 2025. So that's pretty bullish as well. This year, earnings growth of 75%. Next year of 20%. But like the energy companies, it's going to depend on the price of gold. Right now, analysts believing that these commodity prices will remain elevated for 2025. So that's pretty bullish. And what does it look like on the price and consensus chart? That's always my go-to. Um, a little bit more wacky on this one. So the last couple of years have not been that great for the miners. It's been only, mostly down. Analysts started off kind of bullish and then had a cut. So the uh, 2022, 2023 cuts, cuts, but now we're starting to see raises. It is starting to go up and to the right. Um, 2025 right now is looking better than 2026, but even 2026 is starting to move higher as well. And look at these shares. You can see they're not at five-year highs, which was in 2022. So that's interesting. But year-to-date up 26.4% at the 52-week highs and uh, looking to break out possibly further. Um, if it gets past this 52-week high, we're looking at early 2023 highs. It's around there. And then we will be going back into the 2022 cat, uh, era for the next level of resistance, most likely. So um, this is interesting. Nobody's paying it any attention, like I said. It has a $60 billion market cap, and with that base dividend and other variable dividends it might be paying, it's yielding 1.9% right now. So that's Newmont, ticker NEM. Okay, then I was looking around at some of these unknown, unnamed companies. And so I wanted to try to see what is going on with a couple of these. And the one I picked was Skyward Specialty Insurance Group. Now, insurance is hot this year. So that's why I picked this one. I've never heard of it. It has insurance in there. It's hitting 52-week highs. I want to know why, what's going on. So it is the Zach's number one rank, as we know. These style scores a bit better, a B for value, but D for growth, C for momentum, and then you get a VGM score of C. This is a small cap. That's why I've never heard of it. Ticker is S as in Sam, K as in Kathy, W as in Wayne, D as in David. Actually, the K could be for kite. Let's use that one um, because Kathy could be with a C, right? But it is a K. S-K-W-D is the ticker. And this is a commercial property and casualty products insurer, but it does have these specialty areas, which is why it's a specialty insurance group. So the name does give it away. They have eight divisions, including captives, agriculture, professional lines, Accident and Health, Global Property, and then they recently announced that they're having an aviation program. Not sure what that entails, but these are some interesting categories. It's not your usual stuff. They do have a strategy going on right now that's just called Rule Our Niche. That's the title of it because that's when they're going to make the most profits if they're ruling this very small particular niche. And as we know, even from retail, that niches can be extremely good business strategies because uh, nobody's in them. You're in the small little niche area and you can dominate a small little niche area. So instead of being, you know, 
a small player in the big pool, you're a big player in the small pool. Now, this is also interesting. The industry rank is in the top 10% right now for um, insurance, property, and casualties. So it's 26 out of 251. I knew it was hot. So that normally means with the industry rank that a lot of the uh, earnings estimates are being revised higher for the companies in this group. So insurance, yes, it's hot. Um, let's look at the detailed estimates because we have been looking at them and that's important. So uh, PE on this one is only 13.8 and has a peg ratio of 0.77 or basically 0.8. Both indicate value there, which I guess is why it has the higher value style score. And this is a small cap, like I said, with a market cap of uh, one, $1.95 billion. Um, no, $1.6 billion, sorry. $1.6 billion. So I thought maybe there might be like one analyst on this, but no, we're wrong because there's six estimates going on. Now, the estimates don't always mean the number of analysts, but you're not getting six estimates with just one or even two analysts. So scrolling down, uh, for 2024, four estimates are higher in the last 30 days for both this year and next year. So there's numerous analysts on this company because they're all raised probably after the last earnings report. And we're expected to see 40% earnings growth this year and another 10% next year. And looking at how big these estimate revisions are, not huge in insurance because a lot of it goes on, you know, uh, how much premiums have been written and most of it is easy for the analysts to bake in. But now looking for 296 versus 281 just 30 days ago and then looking for 326 next year. So these are nice earnings gains, especially with how cheap the stock is. And you can see why Warren Buffett and Berkshire Hathaway love insurance companies so much, and he has for the last 70 years. And that's because um, they are easy to figure out and everybody needs insurance and you need it even in these niche areas. And you can be really profitable in these niche areas. So year to date, these shares are up 19.5% just a little bit beating the S&P 500. And let's look at the price and consensus chart to see what is going on with these shares. Wow. Okay. I haven't looked at this before I did this. Um, so it looks like it went public in 2023, the start of 2023. And now it's been just up and to the right ever since. So it is at not only 52 week highs, but now all time highs, but it's only been around for two years. But look at that price and consensus. It's up and to the right, very consistent, double digit growth. I love that. And the street does too. And they're even projecting it on this chart through 2026 as well. So this is an interesting small cap. And with uh, small caps maybe being on the radar again, it's time to take a look at some of them. So the Zach's rank can, um, you know, show you some small caps that might not have been on your radar. And in this instance, it really is because I have never looked at this stock. And so this is an interesting one, even for me. So Skyward's Specialty Insurance Group, it's a lot of words, but the ticker SKWD. Okay, we're going to stay kind of on the financial side of things because that's where insurance usually is grouped in with a bank. Yes, a bank made this list. Not surprising because several of the big banks are at 52-week highs, including like JP Morgan, but you still have to get the Zach's number one rank along with it. So this is the Bank of New York Mellon, ticker B as in boy, K as in kite, BK. And it's got the Zach's number one rank, as we know, but look at these style scores. They're not that good either. There's an F for value, an F for growth, a D for momentum, and an F. F is in Frank. That's the lowest score for the VGM. But look at these uh, industry rank, top 8%. 21st out of 251 for banks, major regional. And Bank of New York Mellon is a regional bank. It has a market cap, however, of 50 billion. And they've been around forever, 240 years. They have global financial um, clients. 
They said they have $49.5 trillion in assets under custody or administration and $2 trillion in assets under management. That's pretty impressive. But everybody's going for these larger banks. What does it look like with the detailed earnings estimates? Obviously, the analysts must be raising here. And these banks have reported a while ago. So this should be impressive if it's still keeping that Zach's number one rank. So we have three estimates higher in the last 30 days for this year, four um, in the last 30 days for next year, and then even in the last 60 days, analysts were super bullish and eight estimates are higher in 60 days. And even for 2025, somebody's raised in the last seven days, even over there. So yes, a lot of bullishness. And what does it look like? It's not huge raises, but in the 60 days, it's pretty nice. For this year, up to 563 from 547. For next year, 628 up from 602. But that results in 11.5% earnings growth for this year and about the same for next year, which isn't too shabby for a bank. Now, um, this got an F for value it does have a PE of 12.1, but the PEs are not as good an indicator for the banks. So I'm going to look at the financial overview to see what the price to book is on this one. And it's showing 1.37 for the price to book. So banking analysts usually say to buy a bank when the price to book ratio is around one and to sell it when it gets around two because that's when it's overvalued. One is undervalued, two is overvalued. This is at 1.37. So it's on the cheaper end. So um, it's still attractive here with this type of price to book ratio. Um, again, the PE is at 12.1, but banks aren't as big a deal for PEs. Now, price to consensus on this one, let's take a look, see what this one looks like. Wow, also interesting. So the shares, as I as we know, are breaking out year-to-date up 31%, but look at this, it's now at five-year highs. That's impressive. And the price and consensus lines are going up and to the right for 2024, 2025, and look at 2026, way up there. And so it's all going in the right direction. And that's why the shares also going up and in that right direction. So I'm kind of liking these big regional banks here. They should see a little more added money too when the Fed cuts and people start uh, buying more homes and there's more home mortgages. Plus just lending in general is going to increase. And that's all good for the banks as well. So uh, this one, Bank of New York Mellon, ticker BK, we have a bank on the hot stocks list. Wow. And then we're going to wrap it up with another small cap stock. Um, this one I'd never heard of either. It only has a market cap of $422 million. So this is the smallest out of the five today. And it's called Climb Global Solutions. Ticker is CLMB. And we're going to take a look at what's going on with this one. Um, you can see it is obviously the Zach's number one rank, but it just has a style scores that are so-so across the board. C for value, D for growth, C for momentum, and a C for the VGM. But this one is in the top 25% of Zach's rank. So I'm liking that. 63 out of 251, and it's in the industry of technology services. Well, that can cover just about anything. So I initially thought, well, this one um, must be in maybe the data center somehow to be hot because its tagline is, their mission is to connect our network of partners with superior emerging IT products. So I thought, well, IT products, maybe it's in the data center somehow at, at the data center level. But it doesn't seem to be. No, it's uh, software. And it recently closed on uh, acquisition with Douglas Stewart Software. And that they have a lot of education customers. They do a lot with subscription-based software. Net sales were up 13% to $92.1 from $81.7 
And um, a lot of that, some of that came from the data solutions acquisition, which was in 2023. They have a lot of cash on hand, uh, $48.4 million. Some of that is from this recent acquisition um, in October of 2023. So they now, uh, um, it's up from tw- uh, $36.3 million to the $48.4 million. But remember, market cap of just $422 million. They do pay a dividend to give us back some of this cash. And it's yielding just 0.7%, but it's rare for small caps to pay dividends. You have to have good free cash flow like Climb does. So I'm liking all of that. Year to date, the stock is up 67.3%. And I am curious, I did not look to see like what a, whatever its valuations look like um, because it does have that C for value. So PE is at 29 times. So that's a little pricey, but things that are good are going on here. It also is a peg of 2.6. So I am buying it for the growth here. Only one analyst covering it. We only have one estimate. That's not a surprise with a stock of this size. Um, but this person must be pretty bullish. Yes. Scrolling down, we see this person has raised their earnings estimates in the last 30 days for both this year and next year. And earnings expected to be up 20.6% this year and 9.5% next year. But it is doing these uh, several of these bigger acquisitions. Um, earnings up to 328 from 292 in the last 30 days for this year and then 359 for next year. And I'm kind of curious. It's hard with these small cap companies that only have like one analyst in our system because, um, you know, not every analyst is going to get the whole story correct. So there's going to be a lot more earnings misses in there. But this one, um, is not too bad. They did beat last quarter, beat by a lot, by 35 cents, reporting 83 cents versus 48. But the quarter before they missed, and then they beat the prior one to that. And then in late 2023, in that fall quarter, they uh, missed there. So it's off and on. And now they've had these acquisitions. So the analyst is having to figure out how much that's going to be accretive in. Um, so let's look at that price and consensus chart. What does that look like on a stock like this? That's already soaring so, so much. And now I'm looking at it. It is at five year highs and it's really breaking out here in 2024. And especially in the last like, couple of weeks. So my screen really did pick up on this hot stock with the number one rank. We don't yet have any 2026 estimates in, um, but you can see all the, the the estimates came down originally from their highs, but now we're in 2024 and we're heading closer to 2025. So they're on the increase again, but the small caps, it's really hard to know um, if they only have one or possibly two analysts following, you know, they're, Again, it's going to be much more rocky on what the price of consensus is going to look like. And, um, you know, you are going to get a lot more of this up and down type of movement, beats and misses. Um, I am kind of curious. Let's see what the price and earnings surprise chart looks like on this one. Um, Not too bad, actually. So we didn't get any coverage, really, it looks like, until 2022. And then just those two misses that I just already talked about. And then everything else is pretty green. So... That's good. And the last quarter, like I said, was this big beat right here. And now the shares have started to soar because the street is figuring out, hey, these acquisitions are really driving things. This small cap company is sitting on a lot of cash. It has subscription-based business with the software. And this is a good business to be in. So that's Climb Global Solutions, ticker C as in cat, L as in Larry, M as in Mary, B as in boy. So let me recap the stock tickers I talked about again on this episode. Now, remember, these are all strong buy stocks. That's the number one ranks. So something good is going on there, which we did see when we looked at even just these five. They all had rising earnings estimates. And the stock is trading at the 52-week high, which these are. And several of these are also at five-year highs 
And if I went and looked back further, they might even be at all time highs. Well, the one is the one um, that only just went public two years ago is at all time highs. So these are red hot stocks. And um, that's what I wanted to look at, like what is hot, but it wasn't the stocks I thought, it's some of these others. So you want to deploy the X rank along with you know some of these price discovery features you can do in the screening tools to really see what is moving out there because what shows up on the chat boards or even on you know the financial news and what is popular might not always be the best performers or the hidden gems of the future are not the ones everybody's talking about today. So keep that in mind. So let me recap these stock tickers again. So we had Intuitive Surgical. It is a popular stock and has been a big winner for well over a decade. Its ticker is ISRG. I as in Ian, S as in Sam, R as in Robert, G as in George. So that is one that isn't a secret that has been around a while. Then we had Newmont in the mining, gold mining area, ticker N as in Nancy, E as in Edward, M as in Mary. This area is being completely ignored by the street as commodity stocks usually are, but it too is breaking out now into 52 week highs. Then we had Skyward Specialty Insurance Group. This is the rule our niche insurer hitting new all-time highs, ticker SKWD. Then we had a bank, a big regional bank, breaking out to five-year highs. Bank of New York Mellon, ticker B as in boy, K as in kite. Just two letters, BK. And then we finish it up with this small cap software company in technology services, They are Climb Global Solutions. So they're connecting their network of partners with superior emerging IT products. And the ticker there is C as in cat, L as in Larry, M as in Mary, B as in boy. Climb, C-L-M-B. And as always, you want to be sure to follow along on the Market Edge podcast because you never know what we're going to be covering week after week. And there is a lot going on. We're in the all-important fall part of the trading season. And so we're waiting on the Fed to tell us what they're going to do on the rate cuts here in September. But uh, we have to wait a while to get the big rush of earnings again in October. So what's going to happen over the month of September? And even in October, it's always a mystery and there's always something going on. So be sure to subscribe. As I mentioned earlier, get us on Apple Podcasts, get us on Spotify. We're on Amazon Music. Get us on the video podcasts on YouTube. Put in Zach's Investment Research or just go to Zach's.com slash YouTube and subscribe so you never have to think about what you need to put in the search bar ever again. Just get us. I know many of you are subscribing over there. You'll get plenty of stock picks in addition to this podcast, but just subscribe to get everything. And I'll be back next week with some more stock picks. This material is being provided for informational purposes only, and nothing herein constitutes investment, legal, accounting, or tax advice, or a recommendation to buy, sell, or hold a security. Do not act or rely upon the information and advice given in this podcast without seeking the services of competent and professional legal, tax, or accounting counsel. Publication and distribution of this podcast is not intended to create, and the information contained herein does not constitute an attorney-client relationship. No recommendation or advice is being given as to whether any investment or strategy is suitable for a particular investor. It should not be assumed that any investments in securities, companies, sectors, or markets identified and described were or will be profitable. All information is current as of the date herein and is subject to change without notice. Any views or opinions expressed may not reflect those of Zach's investment.